This lecture was organized by Farouk Alaymi. It is part of an open online course on managerial statistics. In this lecture, we describe how to calculate some common probabilities. In particular, we talk about how to calculate the probability of two events co-occurring, or one of two events occurring, or one event occurring after another. Recall that a Venn diagram could be used to visually calculate the probability of an event. To calculate the probability of an event, we divide the number of occurrence of an event by the number of occurrence of all possible events. If a probability is based on a single event, it is a marginal probability. The probability of two or more events is referred to as a joint probability. This Venn diagram shows the probability of two events occurring. The red area shows the situation where both events co-occur. The yellow area, marked with letter A, shows the frequency of event A occurring without event B. Similarly, the yellow area with, mar with letter B in it shows the event in which only event B occurs. The probability of either of two events, A and B, occurring is calculated by first summing all the possible ways in which event A will occur, plus all the ways in which event B will occur, minus all the possible ways in which both event A and B will occur. We have to subtract the intersection of the two events because it's double counted, once in the event A and another time in event B. In mathematical terms, we say that probability of A or B occurring is equal to the probability of A plus probability of B minus the probability of the intersection of A and B occurring. Let us look at an example. We want to understand who will join our accountable care organization. This kind of information is very important in calculating market penetration of our organization and the selection bias we may face. Suppose we want to calculate the probability of a frail or male elderly joining our accountable care organization. This is calculated by the sum of the probability of the frail elderly joining the organization plus the probability of a male joining the organization minus the probability of a male frail elderly joining. Disjoint or mutually exclusive events do not share any elements. Here we see a Venn diagram of two disjoint events. Since there are no shared elements, then the probability of both events occurring is zero, and therefore the probability of either event occurring is the sum of the probability of each event. Probability of one of several disjoint events occurring is the sum of the probability of each occurring. This is called the addition rule. Given the Venn diagram indicated, what are the elements of this Venn diagram? What are the events? What's the probability of each event? What's the probability of either event occurring? What's the probability of one or the other event occurring? Let us now examine what's the probability of both events co-occurring. The probability of A and B occurring together corresponds to the overlap between A and B and can be shown graphically as the red area divided by all possible events, the rectangular blue area. Often we want to calculate the probability of an event given other situations. Probability of B given A is shown as the letter B, followed by a straight line, 
and followed by a symbol letter A. The straight line designates that event A has occurred and we are interested in if event B will occur. We can get a good intuition about conditional probability by examining the Venn diagram and shrinking the possible events to only the situation where A occurs. Then we can use our definition of probabilities to calculate conditional probabilities. Recall that we had defined probability to be the number of times an event occurs divided by all possible events. So let us begin by shrinking the universe of possibilities. Now the only event possible is A. All the blue area is gone. The event B alone without A is gone. A shrinking universe of possibilities helps you think through calculation of the conditional probability of the event. To calculate the probability of B given A has occurred, we start with the number of times B occurs in the reduced sample space. Since the universe of possible events are just events where A has occurred, this is the red area where B and A co-occur. We divide the red area by number of all possible events since the only thing possible is A, this is given by the yellow circle of A. As before, we are calculating the probability of an event as the ratio of occurrence of the event by the possible events. But now, event A has occurred and the universe has shrunk. This notion of shrinking universe of possibilities is important in giving you intuitions about the meaning of conditional probabilities. In this example, we see how the conditional probability of hospitalization in a frail patient is calculated from the probability of each event. The probability of hospitalization, given that the patient is frail, is the ratio of probability of the joint events, shown as red, divided by the probability of being frail. Again, this example shows how the universe of possibilities shrinks to only frail elderly and among these we look for percent of patients who have been hospitalized. Now that we have defined conditional probability, we can use it to calculate joint probabilities. The probability of two events occurring together, that is the joint probability of two events, is the product of the probability of the event times the conditional probability of the other event. The joint probability of being male and frail is the product of probability of being male and the conditional probability of being frail given that you are male. Two events are independent if knowing one provides no useful information about the other. Remember that conditional probability shows the probability of event B given that A has occurred. If A does not add any information to our estimate of probability of B, then the conditional probability of B is the same as the probability of B. If we think that the diabetes of Joe is not related to Jim, we show this as a probability of Jim's diabetes is the same whether or not we know that Joe is also diabetic. This is not always the case. For example, if we know that Jim has an infectious disease, then Joe is more likely to be infected. Therefore, knowledge of Joe's conditions tells us about Jim's conditions. Under assumption of independence, the general multiplication rule is simplified so that the probability of both events occurring is the product of the probability of each event. So that the probability that both Joe and Jim are diabetic 
is the product of a probability of Joe being diabetic and the probability of Jim being diabetic. The take-home lesson is that conditional probability is calculated from reduced sample space. See if you can answer these simple questions from the Venn diagram provided.